Featuring my good fiend, Roger Walker, on Slasher Pepper. Enjoy. <laughs> hey guys, Slasher Pepper, and welcome to another video. Today is another episode of Talking Horror With, this time with Charlie over from the Instagram horror community. Uh, most people would know him from Instagram as C fucking horror. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, like Will and Dave. Yeah, I'm all good, man. You? I'm doing wonderful. I'm glad to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, man. I'm happy to be here and, you know, try a bit of the collection at the same time as well. <laughs> Hell yeah. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, my first question uh, was, like, what got you into horror? Was it a certain person or? Um, so when I was, like, six years old, my aunt actually showed me the first Scream movie. So that was my amazing introduction to horror. So straight away, I was hooked. Like, I can't lie. Like, that was the film that just kicked it for me, man. And as a kid, I, I actually started collecting horror figures and loads of other stuff. So it kind of was just a rocky ride from there on with my <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah. yeah the did... Scream for me is definitely the one. Like, definitely. It just kicks by everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's been a while since I've seen those, honestly. And it was honestly kind of late before I saw those um in terms of the other movies i saw but that's just my logic you know i haven't even seen the hellraiser movies but i've seen all of these obscure movies from the 80s and it's like oh fair <laughs> should get around to those so <laughs> definitely get around to hellraiser hellraiser rocks oh yeah oh yeah i know they have a good song from ozzy osbourne and motorhead though yeah they do man they do i'm a huge uh, metal fan as well as you probably guess <laughs> oh yeah we'll get to that later too yeah definitely man <laughs> definitely so like would you say the scream franchise is really what got you into horror or was it mostly just the first one so when i was a kid that was my that was what got me sort of watching and then i found chucky as a kid and i was obsessed like i was a weird kid who had chucky dolls in his room at like the age of 10 um so yeah so like i was obsessed with chucky growing up like literally loved him man and uh yeah so that was sort of the the main thing and then as i got so as I got older, I stopped, I stopped collecting. I still watch horror movies, but I just completely stopped collecting them, just like a normal teenager sort of thing. And then when I got a bit older, I started watching The Walking Dead, and I liked that. So I started collecting a couple of The Walking Dead figures and a few other little bits like that. And then I decided that I wanted to start collecting alien stuff. So I don't know if you can see the face, I guess. <laughs> so oh, you can yeah. see another towel stacked <laughs> up behind me. Um, I started collecting some life-size alien beers, and then I started buying alien stuff. And... It just sort of spiraled from there, and then I decided to Michael Myers. Is, Halloween's always been my favorite movie, even from a young age. So I started collecting Michael Myers masks, and the rest is history, man. That's all got me into it. But nowadays, I like my weird sort of underrated horror films, to be fair. So. Awesome. Yeah, the Alien movies, I don't know. It, it, they get uh, talked about too little in the horror community, I feel. I agree, man. Like, do you know what? I don't have a lot of the Alien stuff left. I have all the course so i i have a really unpopular opinion i actually prefer the film prometheus to the original alien and everyone hates me for that wow <laughs> yeah it's a really unpopular opinion that one man yeah um, jesus <laughs> yeah do you know what man that, that film for me was just perfect like i love i love that movie it's one of my favorites of all time why would you, um, why would you say, really it. like why would you put that one over the first one the original Oh, do you know what, man? I don't know. What, I don't know what it is. Like, I, I love the original Alien. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, of course. Prometheus sort of reignited my love for it. Like, I sort of watched that as a kid, and I was always a Predator like guy when I was younger. I loved Predators way over the Aliens. So, like, when I watched Prometheus, and it was sort of like a reinvention of it, giving it a backstory, and the whole idea of the whole like uh, God created us, and then they created the Aliens and stuff like that. I just thought it was awesome, and I loved the creature design on the uh, big like spider trailer by thing. <laughs> oh well, yeah. Uh, do you like uh, Alien Covenant at all then? Yeah, I mean, we all know it's not good. <laughs> um, but I do like it. I mean, I hate the CGI. That was absolutely terrible. But yeah, I mean, I like the film. I like that David was carried on for it. Um, Michael Fassbender. I thought he was amazing in it. Um, so yeah, so I liked him. But the movie for me, I mean, I enjoy it. But it's not as good as obviously the original Alien. Or, any, or Aliens or even Alien 3 and 4. Right. Well, I would, uh, I would definitely say uh, either Alien or Aliens is my favorite, but uh, yeah, I mean, I just love Prometheus and Alien Covenant, and I think it's so refreshing to hear that you actually prefer Prometheus, you know? Yeah, like, I don't know, man. Everyone, like, whenever I've said that, everyone's like, what? Like, you like Prometheus better than the original? I'm like, yeah, 
yeah, don't hate me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got to be open-minded to it. I, I, I mean, no, man. refreshing to hear um, this. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And it's going to be cool because obviously we've got new alien stuff coming um, later in the year. Apparently now Disney have bought it. So I'm proper excited. Yeah. I'm excited to see where this goes. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully it doesn't get really like Disney, but hopefully it will just stick to its road. Yeah, do you, I say. do you think they'll uh, continue with uh, like where Alien Covenant left off? Is that where they're, it's supposed to go? I have no clue. I hope so, but I've got a feeling like I know Disney likes to do stuff based on comics, like with the Star Wars franchise and Marvel yeah. franchises. So I think they might go down like a Alien Genesis comic kind of route. I'm not sure. We have to wait and see. I mean, I hope I hope they pick off where Covenant left off, but I can't see them wanting to bring back Michael Fassbender and various others. So I don't know. I feel like that'd be really big money for a franchise that they're not too like set on yet. Yeah. Well, I, I would see them uh, like do a retcon of Alien Three and Four, and have like a continuation yeah. of Aliens with like Sigourney Weaver back and stuff like that. I mean, I'd be up for that definitely. Yeah, I mean, that'd be fun, I, man. That'd be fun. I wouldn't mind seeing that, but on the other hand, I don't just like 30 years from now, I wouldn't want to be like, whatever happened to that character in the end of Alien Covenant? What, what, where is she now? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I don't yeah, like, no, I agree, man. <laughs> yeah, neither do I. Um, yeah, that always bugs me. So hopefully, they will um, do what we want <laughs> and carry on Alien Covenant. Yes. <laughs> but like everyone who I ever talked to always hates Alien Covenant, like despises it. <laughs> I yeah. don't really understand why. I know. And I mean, for me, it's a fun film. The CGI is just almost unacceptable. Like it's so yeah. obvious that it's yeah, so man. fake. <laughs> it looks yeah, like shit. Really but I, I can kind of forgive that for a little bit. Um, and it's still a fun film, you know? Yeah, definitely, man. I remember seeing it at the cinema and I was like, oh, this is like one of the best movies I've ever watched. And then when it came out, I was rewatching. I was like, no, it's still good, but it was more, it was better in the cinema, definitely. That was one that I felt like you have to watch at the cinema. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. I've, uh, I've probably had that at some point with a movie, but I can't really think of one now. Oh, I do all the time with stuff, man. I rewatch it and I'm like, I've done that with the, the uh, Chucky remake, the Charles Play 2019. Oh, yeah. Um, I really liked it, but then when I got home and watched it, I was like, oh, it wasn't nearly as good as I thought it was previously. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, that sucks. It's funny you mentioned the Child's Play remake. That was my first horror movie in theaters. because Really? Oh, awesome. For such a long time, you, I, I just couldn't see horror movies in theaters, even though I was already a fan and I had seen the most gruesome shit. I couldn't see Halloween 2018 in theaters, you know? Oh, um, man, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, so Child's Play was my first horror movie. And I remember walking out of it thinking that was amazing, you know? Like that was, yeah, it, man. I just thought it was the second best Child's Play movie after Child's Play 2. But ever since, I haven't seen it. So now I'm kind of like, it's, it probably wasn't that good if it's not that real watch. You know what? It's, it's good, but it's not as good when you watch it at home. Like for me, that was a real film that in the cinema, I was like, this is actually so good. I was like, this is the best thing I've watched in ages. <laughs> and then I was gonna let down when I rewatched it. I was like, ah, it's horror good. lives. Be wrong, but... <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. My my first film that I saw in the cinema was The Strangers in 2009. Oh, and nice. that was that was terrible. I was like young, man. I was like 15, 14, and I sort of snuck in. <laughs> um, but it was terrifying. Like I remember being so scared. I was like, this is the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. Especially when like, uh... have you seen it? Yeah, it's it's been a you long time. The scene but I where, like, seen it. Um, there's like a scene where she's standing in the kitchen and he just like walks in behind her and it's just like watching from the back yeah and i remember everyone in the cinema was like screaming and i was sitting there as a kid like oh, this is a bit heavy <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can imagine yeah definitely man but yeah that was a good one too the cinema too lisa and yeah, did you see the second one uh yeah but i didn't see it at the cinema it didn't um it did come to uk cinemas but it wasn't like on like peak times it was like really late at night like one o'clock in the morning Oh, that's... Um, yeah, they just put they just really didn't want to promo it over here. Wow, um, weird. So I didn't get to see it this morning. I liked it um, when I watched it at home, but I didn't think it lived up to the. It was a completely different style movie, in my opinion. Yeah, on the other hand, I feel like that was uh that was the best thing they could do, 
because I, I feel like if they went with the same tone, they would have had to do something really different in that tone, like way different scenes, because else it would probably just be like the scene you mentioned, just them looking behind them, you know, just watching them from the kitchen. Like that would be no fun either. <laughs> We've already seen that. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, yeah I agree, I mean, man. Like, I, go on, man. You go. I love the I love the pop, you know, music in the uh, in the second oh, one. Yeah. I thought the soundtrack was just great, and yeah, the tone is just so different. But uh, I feel like it just it was just so much fun. Like I guess the origin story, in 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 a way was already done in the first one. So now it was just some good old fashioned, uh, fashion slicing and dicing. Yeah, definitely, man. Like the first one's actually quite like a sad film when you watch it back. Yeah. Like everything's super dark, gritty. Like I think it starts with like the, the wife saying no or whatever to, pro- to get him proposed to. <laughs> it's just like a really horrible time throughout the whole film. And then it yeah. ends with the bad guys winning. <laughs> like, yeah. But yeah, I do love that movie. And the second one's super fun. And I like the whole... Uh, burns look that he gets to the end so awesome oh yes that, that was really cool too yeah yeah that was cool man that was definitely cool i would probably say i prefer the second one which is also an underrated opinion or um unpopular opinion but uh <laughs> that's just because it's more like my type of horror movie i'm more about yeah. having okay having, like the characters having fun and then being killed instead of them being like depressed and then being killed like there's I find it hard to enjoy that. It's just too depressing for me, you know? Yeah, um, I know what you mean, man. I know what you mean. I, I completely get that. Like, you like a bit of fun with your horror. Yeah, yeah. Or like Return of the Living Dead. There's just all these punks Great movie. partying, and then there are zombies yeah. running around eating them. Like, doesn't get much more fun than that. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel yeah. Like, I, I quite like my crappy slasher movies, to be fair. Oh, yeah. I kind of stick to that. But lately, I've been venturing out into weird movies like uh, yesterday i watched a film called swallow have you seen that yet i have not i wouldn't recommend it it's very <laughs> odd it's about a girl who swallows random objects that she finds in her house um it's super weird man and it ends so weird like honestly <laughs> j- just check it out man it's the weirdest film i've ever seen <laughs> all right <laughs> it's so odd man like I-, I watched it i was like that was the most pointless film like i had to google it <laughs> to find out if there was any meaning behind what i've just watched I was like, what? <laughs> My mind was just blown. I was like, honestly, like, right. <laughs> I just wasted a couple of hours. Um, yes. Yeah, like, I do like weird horror movies. Like, I like the Midsummer Hereditary and all that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. I actually have a poster of Midsummer right there. So, it, that oh, was nice, man. Nice. Best film of 2019 for me. Without a doubt, man. It's my, uh, it's my girlfriend's favorite horror movie, actually. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, I mean, that one. it kind of goes. Um, it's kind of like exactly the movie you would expect me to hate because it's so depressing. Like she's <laughs> yeah, crying throughout the entire first 10 minutes. Yeah. Her parents and sister are dead. They committed suicide <laughs> and she's just crying throughout the whole thing. It's like the opposite of punks partying, being eaten by zombies. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but no doubt, man. No doubt. I still loved it for some reason. Yeah, it was a good one. Like to be fair, I, I'm more the same as you. I think I don't really like uh, depressing stuff. But then saying that, I've watched pretty much. I've tried to watch pretty much every bad horror movie you can watch. I mean, like bad as in like Serbian film bad. Oh. <laughs> so I've tried to watch everything as horrendous as possible. So now I'm just completely just not phased by anything ever. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, the stuff I've watched is just horrendous. <laughs> yeah, Scarlet I like to life watch. Isn't the worst. <laughs> I like to watch these like really low budget eighties movies too, um, like uh, Tim Ritter. I don't know if you know him. He's like, um, yeah. yeah, like Killing Spree by him. It's just ridiculous, but it's just ridiculously fun. I, I haven't seen that in years, man. <laughs> it's, it's good. You should rewatch it sometime. I do. Do you know what? I need to rewatch. There's so many films. I've got like a long list on my phone. Of just like millions of films yes. I've like, I need to rewatch. It's a nightmare, man. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Because like on one hand, you just want to rewatch a Nightmare on Elm Street, your original every single day. But on the other hand, you yeah. also want to, you know, re- watch one movie for the first time or one that you've watched a long time ago and barely remember. And then you also just have life happening around you. 
Yeah, trust me, man. I'm so nostalgic, so I just watch the same shit every single yes, day. Yes, I have <laughs> the same much. thing. I just, like, Michael Myers, I watch Halloween probably three times a week every week. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> nice. It's just completely up, but it's just an obsession. That and Trick or Treat, I watch continuously. Awesome. <laughs> like, I have done for the last probably three years, just watch them every week. I know House of a Thousand Corpses. That's a big one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Classic. I love that one, too. Um, yeah, it's great. I've actually got a shot on right now. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Yeah. Are you a fan of uh, the Rob Zombie movies? Yeah. Like, I like, obviously, the trilogy of the Firefly family. So, like, uh, Freaking Hell, House of a Thousand Corpses, was Reject. I didn't like Lords of Salem or 31. Um, I just couldn't get into it. I just couldn't get into it either. I'm, a- I'm actually been thinking about rewatching 31. Um, the first time I watched it, I was just, I don't know. I just kept looking at my phone and <laughs> everything just kept distracting me. And I was like, oh, maybe I don't really like this film. <laughs> so I just kind of turned it off. Um, I like I like his Halloween remakes. <laughs> oh, yeah. unpopular opinion again. I like yeah. the second one, even though everyone hates it. <laughs> oh, man. I So I haven't seen 31, nor Lords of Salem yet. And also not Halloween 2. Uh Rob Zombie's Halloween too, but yeah. the Firefly Family trilogy and the first Halloween remake, I love all of those four. So, sorry, man, man, they're the best. Like House of Thousand Corpses is like one of my favorite movies ever. I've even got a, uh, I've got I'm the Devil and I'm here to do the Devil's work tied on my leg. Oh, nice. <laughs> From uh, Devil's awesome. Radio. yeah, man. I've just been actually trying to complete my House of Thousand Corpses collection, so I've just been buying all the masks, tracking down figures and random oh, cool. stuff but it's been super difficult to find i recently got a signature of rob zombie and like a fox there i figured it's awesome man nice that's cool well, yeah man I, it's been cool my, my favorite from the trilogy would probably be the devil's rejects i don't know there's something the dialogue in that one is just the best even though in the other ones it's great too but like in that one like the i love the scene and barely anyone i don't or at least I don't hear many people talking about the scene. Um, but the scene where uh, Sid Haig's character, he steals like the car from the from the mother. You know what? I knew you. I knew you was gonna say that scene. That's one of my favorites. So. Yes. <laughs> like this, just the moment where do I stutter, bitch? <laughs> I <love that. laughs> Trust me, man. It's the best. It's the best. He's like, you better have a reason, or I'm gonna come back and kill your whole family. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best man oh man Sid Hike what a legend yeah may you rest in peace yeah rest in peace man what an absolute legend he actually did a he did another film before he died that I never got around to watch it it was a uh, some sort of Jewish film I think it might have been called like Hanukkah or something like that and he was like a a rabbi in it like he had the hat and like sideburns and everything but I, know, I haven't got around to watching it that's been on my list for the last two years <laughs> wow yeah I, I didn't know about that that's interesting yeah, man. Yeah, if you check it out, let me know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I haven't>, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> you probably won't have been a year's time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, in horror, we usually refer to, like, the big three. You know, Michael Myers, Letterface, and Jason Voorhees. Yep. Um, I'm, it's an assumption that Michael Myers is your favorite. <laughs> yeah, mate. Without a doubt, man. Without a doubt. Would you also say the franchise is your favorite, like the Halloween uh, movies? Yeah, without a doubt, man. Um, yeah, hundred percent. Like, yeah, Michael Myers. Obviously, as you can probably guess, I spent a yes. big part of my life tracking <laughs> down Michael Myers masks. And yeah, I actually own pretty much every figure from um the franchise that's been released by proper companies. So every licensed figure that's ever been released, I pretty much own, apart from a couple of ones that I'm missing. But yeah, so I've been tracking down them for the last few years and. I've pretty much got a full collection. I'm just going to look at it. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I've got like a full set now. And I've got a full set of masks. But obviously, I can't stop buying white masks. So <laughs> Michael Myers is power white face. Don't go bad. It just keeps bringing me back in to buy more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Honestly, man, it's ridiculous. It's your favorite as a franchise. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely my favorite as a franchise. Like the first, the first movie is just, in my opinion it's the best horror movie of all time i always say that <laughs> to be fair like i just i can't get enough of it mate 
Um, everything about it is just perfect. The suspense, nothing scarier than a random dude talking to a girl in a, in a mask. <laughs> yes. like that's just completely an alley. Just the most messed up idea ever. Um, there's nothing scarier. Um, like where Halloween 2 takes it and the rest of the story, I'm not really huge on. Like I don't like the whole brother and sister story arc. For me, that's just a bit... <laughs> yeah, that just pained me when I brought that in. I'm not actually huge on Halloween 2. I'm not a massive fan of that movie. Like I like it. But it's not as good as Halloween Four, in my opinion, which is a, which everyone hates that also. And <laughs> I like Twenty Eighteen as well. Twenty Eighteen's great. Um, oh yeah. yeah. Ha- Halloween Two for me just. I mean, I love Dick Warlock's portrayal of Michael Myers, and I love the way that the mask fits him. But I just don't like the fact that it's all in a hospital. For me, that misses the Halloween vibe, and I'm a huge fan of the season Halloween. <laughs> so right. Like yeah, for me, like a Halloween movie should have like loads of pumpkins everywhere. Oh yeah. Halloween. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I've always like for different reasons, I guess. I hadn't thought of that, but that's a good argument to be made. Um, but I've always never been much of a fan of the second one. However, I I will I love the third one, Season of the Witch. I think I that love the third is one. so great. I love the third one. Yeah, that's uh, you can sort of see the mask just oh, yeah. taking out there. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, I love the uh, season of the witch mask and the film. The film's great. Yeah, I mean you can't you can't fault that movie. It even has Michael Myers in it in exactly in that. So <laughs> exactly, what more do you want in a Halloween film? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was I was a huge fan of uh, the 2018 film as well. So I'm looking forward to oh, yeah. where the franchise goes. I loved that film. Like I never understood the hate that it got. I know it got a lot of love as well, but. I don't know. For me, I just thought it was absolutely quality. They hit the nail on the head. Yes. Yeah, I love the new one as well. And um, I actually was lucky enough to interview James Jude Courtney, and he was just the best guy ever. Oh, I know what I'm doing tonight. I'm going to watch that. (laughs) Oh, nice. Nice. (laughs) Definitely, man. I'll be watching that. That sounds awesome. Oh, I bet he was super cool, man. Yeah, he was. We had like... uh, an hour conversation and it was the most random conversation like about life things too like it's a pretty philosophical uh interview but he was just <laughs> the greatest guy ever yeah nice do you know what i haven't actually met a lot of people in horror and that always really pains me like i've only been to like normal comic cons i've never been to like horror cons. Right. i live down in essex way and all horror cons are up the north of the uk <laughs> right so for me it's like a five hour drive if i want to go out there and oh it. yeah yeah for yeah, me it's, it's all the way fun. uh all the way east in 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 germany basically oh okay right where are you from then from holland oh fair okay right i I, don't, I wouldn't have guessed based on accent to be fair. yeah no a lot of people think i'm from the usa or something <laughs> yeah well, yeah i thought you were from america not based on accent but just based on I don't know. I just thought you was. Yeah. <laughs> I, just well, I mean, my head <laughs> I mean, um, most people, I, most people I interview are from the USA, and I guess, uh, I guess at this age, you still kind of tend to, you know, um, transfer other people's personalities, sort of, and like styles and and accents and stuff like that. So, I guess I've just kind of become an American by talking to so many Americans yeah, over fair. the years. <laughs> Yeah, fair, man, fair. Yeah, I think the horror community is kind of bigger in America. Like, oh, yeah. I haven't got that many people on Instagram oh, from, yeah. like, UK or Europe, to be fair. Yeah, I would say so, too. Definitely bigger out there. I'm dying to go out to America for Halloween Horror Nights in Florida. Oh, uh, that would be amazing. Be so awesome. Yeah, <laughs> man. But um, coronavirus seems to mess up this yeah. last year. <laughs> it's kind of putting Hopefully. a break on it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Hopefully next year, though. Hopefully we'll get um, Halloween in cinemas this year as well oh yes i I definitely hope so but uh with like the vaccines it's looking kind of promising now though but uh yeah definitely man i honestly can't imagine them postponing halloween kills for one like another year yeah i i don't think they will i think if it's not in cinema they'll release it as like streaming yeah which i'm i'm okay with i don't mind watching films in my house <laughs> yeah. I do anyway yeah, exactly. so, like, yeah, all good. <laughs> um i do hope it gets like some sort of cinema release i mean the uk are looking to open stuff up in summer so hopefully it'll be all good <laughs> yeah i would say so uh 
say so too. I mean, for a very long time over here in Holland, like things were open in terms of cinemas and stuff. It was just like less seats, but um, yeah, you could still go to the cinema and well, yeah, let's hope by the time October yeah, comes, definitely. cinemas will be open again. Man. I was thinking like the last movie I saw in cinema was in The Invisible Man. And that was ages ago. That was like the right at the start of last year. I think my last movie was like, I don't go to the cinema that often anymore anyways, but my yeah. mine probably was Crawl, like the uh, alligator film. <laughs> Oh, nice. I, I quite liked that, to be fair. I thought it was quite good. Yeah, it was it was fun. Yeah, Sam Raimi worked on that, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He's a great director. Oh, yeah. Yeah, are you a fan of the Evil Dead films at all? Of course, man, of course. I love, I've actually met Bruce Campbell. He's the only horror celebrity. That wow, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, he's the only one. Um, but I did get to meet him. He was at, I went to a Walking Dead Comic Con um, a long time ago. And he was there. He was just casually just sitting down and stuff. So I went up and spoke to him. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So that was really cool. I didn't have I didn't have anything to get signed or anything. So I just kind of walked past and when I noticed he wasn't talking to anyone, I just went up and spoke to him for a little bit. <laughs> nice. That's awesome though. Yeah, yeah I man, remember and he was super nice. It's cool. Did you did you ever see the uh, original Maniac? Yeah, of course. So you know the uh photographer like the the woman photographing right yeah yeah so she's also in the james bond movie the spy who loved me and like right, okay. as a kid i was a huge james bond fan like i watched all those movies over and over again as a kid and there were like these comic cons over here like more general ones uh, and then there were, were just these collector cons with all sorts of shit. And there were all these Bond girls going there. And I actually got to meet her. And I was like, you know, I got something signed from like the James Bond movies. And no way, that's awesome, like, man. Now she's in my favorite horror, one of my favorite horror movies, Maniac. <laughs> Maniac's great. I love the remake as well with Elijah Wood. Oh, man, I, I need to watch that one so badly. Have you not watched it yet? Oh, man. It's no. Good. It's good. He's an amazing actor. Uh, definitely good. You definitely need to check that out. Yeah, for me, it's like I can watch Maniac for the sixth time or or <laughs> watch the remake yeah. for the first time, right? <laughs> I know I know what you mean. My girlfriend's been saying, oh, like, can we not watch the uh, remake Halloween with Rob Zombies for ages? And I'm like, oh, but I'd rather watch the first one again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just want to watch 1978 all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> so Halloween. But, yeah, back on, back on, go on, man. So Halloween, uh, the original, you would say that is your favorite movie of all time? Yeah, man, 100%. So top three movies for me is Halloween 1978, the original Scream, and House of a Thousand Corpses. Wow. Um, they're, my, they're my big three, without a doubt. Wow. They're my favorite movies and stuff that I just go back to constantly. Nice. Well, those are all yeah, three man. amazing choices. Yeah, they are indeed. Like I love um like I like Brother Thames and I like um Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Nightmare on Elm Street, but they're just not as prominent in my life as Halloween. I do have actually some tattoos of Leatherface and Jason and a few other stuff. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah, man, you gotta love them all. If I'm like top three right now, I actually gotta like, think of that kinda. Um It's hard, isn't it? Yeah. For me, top three would probably be, well, number three, the Blob remake, the 88 one. Great movie. Love that flick. The gore is amazing. That was one of the few movies where I watched it and the gore just like really shocked me. I was like, holy shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. Then The Shining. I mean, I got the poster wow. over there, so. Oh, awesome. I love The Shining. Big yeah. fan of The Shining. Classic. Uh, but then my all-time favorite movie is uh, is Intruder from 1989, the grocery oh, store movie. slasher. Yeah, that's another great movie as well. Yeah, th- I because- mean they're three amazing, di- very different movies as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. It's one is a creature feature, one is like a a critically acceptable movie, <laughs> and then yeah, definitely like a B movie slasher again. <laughs> Yeah, do you know what? I actually showed my best friend The Shining for the first time about a month ago, 
And he was just like, he was like, how have I gone without watching these blokes? It's so good. I was like, exactly. <laughs> I was like, it's so good. Like, there's just nothing to beat the shining. It's just amazing. Yeah, it is. It's like a classic for sure. And I mean, usually, usually I go more to the things like critics would hate, but horror fans would yeah. love because that's just, you know, usually those are the best films, but, uh, or at yeah, least definitely. I enjoy those the most. Um, but like The Shining is just such an entertaining movie too. It's, oh, it's just the it's just the acting in it is just like yeah. absolutely untouchable. Like you just can't be beaten. Did you see that movie last year, or I think it might have been the year before, Ready Player One? It was like an action film, and they had a whole Shining scene in it. Oh yes, yes, up. that was so cool. I love that movie too. I, man, that was awesome, wasn't it? Like I, I couldn't believe that I even did like the bathtub scene and everything. Awesome. Yes, I mean it. That was such. They a, went up fully all in. That was such a fun film, though. Oh I mean, yeah, great movie. Yeah, yeah. It was that's it was, on my list uh, of like best movies of all time. It's such a good film. Yeah, I mean it was basically just a throwback to the eighties, and it was just this fan service, but. I mean, I don't mind being surfed, so I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel you, man, 100%. They just had a bit of everything. They even had a Chucky in it at one point, right? Yeah. And... I'm pretty sure he was in like the final battle, like stabbing someone. <laughs> yes. And and at the beginning, I think there was like a Freddy jumping. Yeah, there was a Freddy, wasn't there? I was, kind of, I was trying to think who the other slasher was, and it was Freddy. Yeah, but I think Jason too, actually. I think they were in the same shot, kind of jumping yeah, around probably not. somewhere. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good film, man. Like proper. I remember watching that. And I was like, this is like very, very good. Like high budget, like almost Lord of the Rings level good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good comparison. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, I kind of anything that I think is good, I kind of compare to Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, in terms of like this journey thing and trying to conquer something, I guess, and this race against time sort of thing. Yeah. Exactly. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, trust me, man. You got to compare everything to Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yes. So um, we already briefly uh, mentioned metal music. Um, like, w- which one came first for you? Was it horror that got you into metal, or metal that got you into horror, or did you get into both kind of separately? Because so for me, numbers. yeah, for me it was separate. So I, I had like uh, some older friends that sort of lived on my street when I was young. I remember it was on a, he burnt me on a, like a disc, um, Slipknot's video off uh, Left Behind. And it gave me the disc and he's like, oh, watch this. Like, it's awesome. And it changed my life. <laughs> nice. Um, I, remember, I remember putting it on my like old school dial up PC and putting it in and watching it. And I was like, this is like the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> um, and I was hooked, man. Like from there on out, like I'm still a Slipknot fan, but like I'm not like a diehard fan of, I wouldn't call it masks or anything like that can't be too many for me to start with (laughs) um but yeah i'm a big i'm a big rock and roll metal fan uh a huge marilyn manson fan and obviously in light of recent allegations i'm not really going to discuss him that much yeah um but yeah but yeah man yeah i'm a huge metal fan i love finding new music old music anything yeah i'm a big fan of everyone awesome uh what about you so for me um like horror came first for sure um and horror was kind of an evolution too like it started with spider-man from 2004 then the punisher or from 2002 uh then the punisher from 2004 which is a bit more violent and bloody and then just evil dead and it all went downhill from there yeah for sure man Uh, and um so yeah eventually i got to the friday the 13th films and i watched uh Eventually, I got to Jason Lives, of course, which is my favorite Friday the 13th, by the way. Um, nice. And, you know, it had the song Man Behind the Mask by Alice Cooper. And I was like, yeah, this is amazing and so heavy. I mean, it's not heavy at all, but <laughs> at the time, I thought it was yeah. the heaviest shit ever. <laughs> so yeah, definitely, man. From that, I kind of started listening to the earlier Alice Cooper stuff, like Brutal Planet and Dragon Town. I'm not sure if you're too familiar with that stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. 
I know you. I know you. Yeah. So that's a bit heavier. And yeah, from there, I just, uh, again, it all went downhill from there. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no doubt, man. <laughs> and one of the non horror movies I watched, which also kind of got me into it, is uh, Sing Street. I don't know if you ever heard of that. No, movie. I haven't. I haven't ever heard of that. It's my, like, my favorite non horror movie. Um, okay, cool. I'll check that out. Yeah, someday. Put it on your thousand yeah, plus I'll put movies list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, at the beginning you could hear uh motorhead stay clean and i just oh, loved I it i thought it was so yeah, cool. I love head. and uh, eventually i um i'll listen to like the this is motorhead playlist in the gym and i remember overkill playing um and like the double bass at the beginning i was, I was like wow this is fucking awesome you know start That's working awesome. out a little faster of course yeah draw. <laughs> And I remember you know what, exactly my... what exercise I was doing. So that's a funny thing. Um, <laughs> and like, I thought the song was over, but as you know, in overkill, like the double bass comes back again. And it's, yeah. I was like, holy fucking shit. Is this like a new song or did <laughs> they just continue? And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Um, and yeah, Motorhead, my favorite band of all time. Mm. Pink tribute. Oh, to nice, bro, nice. <laughs> I love, I'm a, I'm a Motorhead fan. Actually, do you know what? I found Motorhead through wrestling. So I don't know if you know that Triple H. Triple um, H, the the game. Yeah. King exactly. of Kings. Um, I'm a massive wrestling fan. I was actually on the wrestling. They've got like a screens up now. And I was on it like this the other day in the crowd. Um, about a week ago, which is pretty cool. No. Um, but yeah, I remember hearing um, the game. And I was just like, this is awesome. And then through that, I just discovered my head and was like, oh, this dude's so cool. Yeah, and so many Lemmy's people. also like a star icon. The dress is awesome. He always has. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, so many people uh, got to Motorhead through like Triple H's entrance song. <laughs> yeah. Without but a doubt, man. I love that. I love that. I mean, a lot of people will be like gatekeepers thinking, you know, Oh, they'll only listen to the game. Like, so what? If more people are going to listen to Motorhead, I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, to be fair, I think that was just like a, that was almost like a door for me, for Motorhead. Because, like, I loved uh, Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath, oh, yeah. obviously. I was, oh. I'm a huge Sabbath fan and a huge Ozzy fan. I actually went to their last ever show, which was pretty cool. Nice. But yeah, so, like, I, I'd never actually, like, discovered Motorhead on my own as a kid. So Triple H was completely and utterly the way that just opened it up. And do you know what? I still find loads of cool bands from wrestling now. Like he, uh, Triple H manages one of their sub brands called NXT, and he's always getting like new rock and roll artists on and stuff. So that's pretty cool. For sure, awesome. Yeah, he did a speech at Lemmy's uh, memorial too. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that because there are uh, he's still where Triple H does whenever because like he's still a part time wrestler technically. Whenever he gets in the ring, he still has a motorhead patch on his boot. So oh, like, nice. Nice. Yeah, he's always a uh, high homage, which is nice. I'm not even a wrestling fan, but if anyone would ask me who is my favorite wrestler, I have no idea, but I would just say Triple H because he has motorhead song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but do you know what? He's actually Triple H is my favorite wrestler. So that's all my oh, sense. nice. See? Yeah, he is uh, always my favorite. <laughs> we agree on it. I don't have many arguments to support it, but um, well, I'm just going to leave that to you then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely but yeah man like uh metal music's always been a massive part of my life and i'm always like looking for new music i, I literally constantly search for new new music awesome. especially with like coronavirus times there's nothing coming out so like uh oh yeah, man trying to find new music has been difficult man uh brand of sacrifice do you know them no i don't i don't think they released a new single yesterday. They released like three singles in the last couple of months, and a new album is coming out, I think, next week's Friday. Oh, awesome. I'll check that out. What sort of what sort of metal are we talking? It's, like screaming metal or like it's deathcore. <laughs> awesome. That's perfect for me, mate. <laughs> yeah, lots of lots of breakdowns and slamming. Nice. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, I love my deathcore stuff. I was always a massive fan of bands like Whitechapel, Suicide Silence. Oh, yes. And all them sort of proper old school deathcore like stuff. Nice. I always loved them growing up, man. Like bring me, even the old school Bring Me the Horizon and stuff like that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I, I love uh, um, Slaughter to Prevail. They're pretty cool too. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you know what? My girlfriend actually just got a delivery of two of their new shirts. 
<laughs> nice. <laughs> cool. Yeah, they're cool. They do great merch as well. Sorry? They do great merchandise as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, they uh, they sell their own mask, uh, like, too. Yeah, I've seen them um, in some of, like, the mask collecting groups on Facebook and stuff, people getting their masks. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I kind of want one of them. I look awesome. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, you got the mouth that kind of moves while you're talking, which is just yeah. awesome. <laughs> Another band I've been loving at the minute is Ice Nine Kills, um, doing all their metal songs about horror movies. Yeah, just I've heard it. so much about them, but I, I got to listen to it. Yeah, man, listen to it. They do a, there's a song called Stabbing in the Dark, which is literally about Michael Myers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it's awesome. They did the, is that like a new album where it's like the cover? No, like that, theater that was the, I think it was the 2018 one. I can't remember. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> I right. can't remember when it was out, but yeah, it's awesome, man. Definitely check it out. It's, it's a fun album. They've got like a song about Freddy Krueger, Jason. They've got, they've covered pretty much everyone you can think of. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah it's pretty cool, man. That yeah. And, um, but then the favorite band, is there like a number one, for you like for me it's motorhead do you have uh, a, a number yeah. one uh marilyn manson is my number one nice <laughs> yeah he i mean i'm not gonna talk about anything bad but that's his signature on my face nice awesome. <laughs> yeah um yeah i met him back in 2017 and that was pretty cool for me um so yeah <laughs> but yeah um he's definitely my number one um i mean second is so hard for me to choose like i can't then I just have like a list of bands I like. It's so hard. I'm a big fan of Typo Negative, Motionless in White, uh, Whitechapel, Bring Me the Horizon, uh, Mikey McGraw Man's Emo Kid stuff. <laughs> I was a proper emo kid growing up. So I love all like Mikey McGraw Man's and all those sort of bands. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Merlin Manson has like a really cool new drummer though. I saw like some. Yeah. I, I, what's the what's the guy's name? He looks so young too. He looks like he's my age or I something. I think he's name. probably yeah. in his twenties, but he looks like he's seventeen, like me. Yeah, definitely. Are you only seventeen? I didn't realize you were seventeen. Yeah, man, seventeen. Oh, fair. I didn't realize you were seventeen. You look older, man. Yeah, I I get that more often. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't realize you were seventeen. Yeah, usually people say I uh. I kind of act older too, but yeah. You yeah, know. I think that's more what it is than look. I think you more act older. Yeah. I mean, most kids nowadays suck anyway, so. <laughs> Maybe like I just don't suck. suck in it's that easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the arrogance is a high I'm, a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm 25. Nice. That's much. Not awesome. Yeah, man, getting on. Yeah, getting old, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Well, once you're 50, you you wish you were 25. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, man. No doubt. I'm 25 and I spend my life collecting yes. white rubber masks. <laughs> it's a good way to go, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually funny you mentioned it. You uh, refer to it as rubber because um, uh, that's another interview I did. Nick Castle. Um, and like he was saying... That he worked on uh, the, uh, Dark Star, like John Carpenter's first movie. And yeah. he was actually the alien in that movie. But that alien. No way. Yeah. Yeah. But that alien is like a, be a rubber beach ball. So he was saying like how that was the first time John Carpenter put him behind rubber. <laughs> <laughs> That's jokes, man. I bet I was awesome in the castle. Oh, yeah. And you know what's better so is cool. that. The fact that I got that interview because James Dude Courtney linked him, linked me with him. Like, that's just. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. I'd love to meet Nick Castle, man. He's the man. He's such a funny guy, too. He's like hilarious. <laughs> I bet, man. I want to meet him and um, obviously John Carpenter. So bad. Them dudes have cost me so much money. <laughs> so yeah. I want to meet him and just thank him for the good times, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I uh I saw John Carpenter live at a concert, and they also had tickets for like VIP tickets with meet and greet and all. And I didn't get it, and now I'm just like, I oh, hope this man. Corona shit just gets over with it, and I can actually buy the fucking meet and greet <laughs> tickets, you know? Yeah, definitely, man, definitely. Yeah, I've done quite a few of like the meet and greet um like fan experiences and stuff, but 
they, I mean, they're so expensive, man. Yeah. Like, so expensive. I think when I met Marilyn Manson, it was like 400 pounds. Wow. It was just, yeah. Men- yeah, dude, it was mad. <laughs> like, it's so crazy how much they charge. When in reality, you could probably just kind of meet him if you hang around <laughs> somewhere anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, too. Like, I've actually gotten kind of lucky with doing some of these interviews because sometimes they'll charge like 70 bucks for a cameo video. And I'm, yeah, and I have like an hour conversation with them for free. It's how does that match up, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool that you get to it to be fair. Yeah, or I mean, also with like concerts, I bought, I got to see Alice Cooper live a few years back. And Money. It cost like the tickets were 80, 80 euros, I think. Yeah. And like a, a, a few, a couple of seconds of a video of him giving you a personal greeting is like eight, uh, like 800 euros, 500 euros. Oh, man. It's like it's in the crazy, hundreds. Isn't it? It's crazy, man. Uh, you know, the, the wrestler, the Undertaker, um, he did a cameo appearance recently and it was a thousand pounds for yeah, like it's... 30 seconds. Crazy. He only did like 30 of them, but it's like, apparently it's sold out in like seconds. I was like, who's paying that? Like, yes. Honestly, like a thousand pounds just to get, a, you, you're not even meeting him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. My God, I don't know. I couldn't pay that. <laughs> yeah. And now that I think of it, I think uh, the tickets for like a meet and greet with Alice Cooper, like you get to see him live performing and you get to actually meet him. Yeah. That was less money than just a couple of seconds of him saying hi and happy birthday to, you know, on Mary or whoever. <laughs> yeah, 100%, man. It's super weird. As well, like, uh, at, like, festivals and stuff now, they have, like, meet and greet tents where you can go meet bands for free and stuff. Like, it's super weird. I remember a few years ago, I was at a festival, and uh, there's this rock band. They're quite, like, a up-and-coming band called Palo Royale. And uh, oh, yeah. I... I met them at a, like a meet and greet and now like I'm good friends with them. <laughs> nice. Like I literally met them at a meet and greet and now every time they come to the UK, we got like backstage and shows and stuff and I'm like, oh. So yeah, it's probably cool, man. So like, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Cool, so like from a free meet and greet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, super weird, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's cool because like I, um, I make like clothes and stuff and I have like sold a few things through this, uh, through like my Instagram and stuff. So like when I made like a, I did like, I don't know if you saw, I did like devil hoodies with like literal horns on them oh, yeah. a while back. <laughs> uh, and uh, I got to give them to like the band and stuff so they could wear them and I could get like promo pics on them and stuff. That was super cool. Awesome. That's, yeah, that is really cool. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, man, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just weird how some of these things like line up or how they don't line up at all, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's just completely and hardly random. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized I've got like a gremlin ear sticking out the side of my head. <laughs> well, I got I mine. The the whole time. I don't know if. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah, I feel like it was a, I think I said a fake, maybe. Where did I put it? Oh, there you go. Like right there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I could <laughs> Awesome. I got mine right there. <laughs> God, I love gremlins, man. What movie? Yes. Yes. I watched the. I got to be honest, though. Like I watched it this Christmas and I, I actually thought it was uh it wasn't as good as I remembered it was. Oh uh, really? Yeah. yeah man, fair. I um actually just before like coronavirus kicked in, so it was like December twenty nineteen. In fact, actually I think it'd been kicking for a few months, but um I when it was like the anniversary of Gremlins, so I actually went and saw it at the cinema again. <laughs> so nice. that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was really cool, man, to be able to see that film in the cinema. It was much better on the big screen as well. Yeah, it is. I guess it is one of those movies where it is really cool to see it on the big screen, you know. But yeah, definitely, man. I don't know. Maybe I'll watch it again next Christmas, and I'll, I'll my yeah, expectations man, will be out. lower, you know, and then then I'll like it. So yeah, definitely. They're actually doing um trick or treat radio to bring out a new Gizmo prop. I've noticed it looks so, it looks so much better than the than the one I've got. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna be getting that. Yeah, definitely, man. Cool, hundred <laughs> percent. I fully have like a fine addiction. <laughs> yes, <laughs> maybe next time we'll, you'll have a you'll have a shelf with just gizmos everywhere and Michael Myers. Yeah, mate. Everywhere. You never know, man. You never know. So this is only one of my collection walls. Along the wall behind you, I've got a row full of cabinets, and then along this wall, I've got a whole wall full of figures. 
<laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and then downstairs, I've got pumpkins and life-size Michael Myers and Jack Skeleton and <laughs> Sam from Trick or Treat and all sorts of stuff everywhere, man. It's all scattered around the house. <laughs> awesome. Well, it sounds like the kind of place I would want to live in. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt, man. Without a doubt. It's hard. Like, I like to contain it all to one room, but it's got to the point where I've got no space left, man. Like, at all. <laughs> so, like, yeah, just everything's, like, everywhere. Like, I don't know if you see me. I mean, I've got, like, a life-size Annabelle doll no, now. Oh, just Jesus. kind of chilling in the corner <laughs> of the room. Like, honestly, man, like, so my eye sleep's literally there. <laughs> Next to me is an Annabelle doll. <laughs> it's got ridiculous no one will be able to sleep except for horror fans yeah no do you know what my girlfriend always gets asked on her instagram like how do you sleep in that room with all these faces looking at you <laughs> but i suppose we're just used to it <laughs> yeah i mean some people get get like paranoid of some bathrobe hanging somewhere but yeah, not me <laughs> definitely not me we'll just have a life-size serial killer bust standing somewhere in a corner and Sleep peacefully. Yeah, do you know what? I actually have some uh, serial killer memorabilia as well. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I have a I have a Charles Manson mask, which wow. is pretty creepy. Awesome. Yeah, but definitely one of the uh, one of the creepier bits I've got. You know. <laughs> is that is that the only thing that would potentially have you lose sleep? <laughs> uh, no, I've got. I mean, I've got uh, Charles Manson's signature. I've got a few. I've got like a nice little Manson display going on. That's probably the creepiest thing that I've got in there, to be fair. That's the most real thing that I've yeah, got. Yeah, exactly. Else. You know? Yeah. I mean, Michael so, Myers. Yeah, maybe. Behind the mask of Michael Myers, you have all these nice people, but behind the mask <laughs> of Charles Manson, there's actually like a fucked up yeah. serial killer or something. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's definitely the creepiest thing that's in here. Yeah, without a doubt, man. Yeah. Yeah, let's go, mate. <laughs> I'm just trying to think if I've got anything else that's like super messed up in here. I don't think, I think that's pretty much the main thing that sort of would set anyone off. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe just, I think people were like, when my friends come in here and stuff, they're like, I don't know how you sleep with like how, like behind, so opposite my bed directly. So like behind you, where you're on now, is um, two Chucky dolls stacked up <laughs> and they're just literally staring straight down onto the bed. Um, so yeah, so that probably creates a big way out all the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well awesome yeah, <laughs> yeah man i've got some uh i've got i've acquired some cool stuff over the years <laughs> yeah well it's uh it's I'm... better it, uh, people always uh refer to us horror fans as being weird but it's better to be weird than ordinary i would say trust me dude i'm very happy to be weird man <laughs> for sure is there yeah. anything uh you would like to add to the uh video uh not sure man really i don't know yeah, I think I'm pretty set, man. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, maybe just that I want to continue to get loads of more weird horror stuff <laughs> and yes. just keep going. <laughs> well, Until everyone I can't even move. <laughs> <laughs> just moving around the room here, you know. Dude, like it's already good. Like I don't even have a TV in my room anymore. Like I can't <laughs> fit a TV in my room, so I had to take it out. <laughs> well, I guess uh, everyone could keep track of uh, whatever weird creepy things you collect on uh, your instagram yeah they can indeed man and i'm also going to be doing more clothing and stuff on instagram and like the fashion design is like my main stage or fashion design and social media so they're awesome. sort of my two things so yeah so fashion design so i keep an eye out later this year i'm gonna um start doing some custom pieces um or be inspired by horror movies so i've got some big plans for cooler stuff so it should be fun so uh, I'll put a link to uh, your account in the description and uh, to everyone watching. I think it's a good note to end on. Uh, you know, it's better to be weird uh, and maybe yeah, definitely man. than ordinary. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> well, thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you guys next time. See ya. All right. All right. You again, you again, I know you're